everybody, it is Chef Erin. Hi, I'm Chef Chelsea. Welcome back to the Coffee Flower Lab here in Seattle, Washington. I hope everybody had a good two weeks since you last saw us. I know I did. Chelsea, I hope you did too. You're I'm still here. I'm here. No baby. <laughs> it's, so, so, it's looming. Right. So we wanted to do um, something a little heartier today. So we are going to do some coffee flower pasta with coffee flower meatballs which might kind of blow your mind a little bit because um, how do we incorporate coffee flour into both? You're going to find out. Yes. Um, I'm going to just jump right in because it. it's going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to show you how to make the pasta dough first. We'll jump over to Erin. She'll make some meatballs and then I'll cut the pasta. Um, we're going to start with our KitchenAid mixer. Um, we'll take about, let me look at my ingredients here. Here we are. <laughs> We're live. I have about a half a cup with a tablespoon or so, 110 grams of semolina flour. I'm going to take a little over a quarter of a cup of whole wheat flour, it's 55 grams. Another 55 grams, or again, a little over a quarter of a cup of high gluten bread flour. And then I have 16 grams, which is about two and a half tablespoons of coffee flour. You can use both the regular or the coarse in this recipe. You don't have to modify any of the other ingredients. Um, I'm going to show you the dough with regular, and then I'll probably cut with the coarse just because it's really pretty. Of course, I mean, they're both really pretty, but since we know now that you can make it with both, you might as well show you both. I'll yes. take these for you. Oh, thank you. So we have all of our flours in the bowl. I'm going to add... A pinch of salt. Let's stand there. there we go. And then I have two whole eggs and two egg yolks. So I'm going to pop right in. We've done it both ways using all yolks or eggs and yolks. I figure using both, it's a little less wasteful, unless you're already planning on doing a macaroon or an egg white cookie or something. But I always not. find that no matter what I'm doing, if, I, if something calls for separated eggs, I always end up with a container of whatever's left over, whether it's a container of the egg whites or a container of the egg yolks. Yeah, so I did a little bit of playing, a little modifying, and I've learned that two whole eggs, two yolks works perfectly. So, excellent. And then I have about a tablespoon or so of milk. If we need it, we can add more, but let's first mix this up and see how wet it gets. And for those of you who might be intimidated about making pasta at home, it's really easy. It is really easy. It just takes a little bit of practice getting the rolling right. Yeah. And I'll use a dough hook to put this together. I'm going to let this mix and why don't you jump into the balls. Perfect. So I'm going to do coffee flour meatballs today. This recipe is just something that's really quick and easy. As we know, I like the quick and easy recipes. So in this bowl, I have a pound of ground pork and a pound of ground beef. You can use whatever you typically use for meatballs. Um, I would normally throw some ground veal in here too, just to give it that extra flavor, but I'm not going to today. So a pound of ground beef, a pound, a pound of ground pork, and to that I'm going to add some freshly cracked pepper and some um, salt just for to taste. I mean, everybody's taste profile is different, so I would that was about a tablespoon of each. I'm gonna put on my gloves because I am working with raw meat and especially when you're dealing with raw pork, you do wanna use gloves. Um, so we've got the salt and pepper in there. I'm also going to add, now I confess, the original recipe called for about a quarter cup of grated parm. I'm not gonna stop at a quarter cup. Why would I do that? I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say that was about three quarters of a cup. Go big or go home, I say and a tablespoon of coffee flour. Now for the meatballs, Chelsea said that for the pasta you could use regular or coarse. For the meatballs, I really recommend using the regular. So there goes a tablespoon of the regular coffee flour. Again, the original recipe called for a tablespoon of fresh chopped parsley. I'm gonna add more just because why not? I chopped it all. That was a lot of hard work. I'm gonna put extra in there. And then, an egg. Now those of you who have made meatballs before are probably thinking about where are the breadcrumbs? This is where the coffee flour comes into play. We don't need to add breadcrumbs because the coffee flour is actually going to help bind them together. That co combined with the eggs. Hello gluten-free meatballs. <laughs> Absolutely. 
So I'm mixing this up. You don't want to, a lot of people will say, you know, why don't you mix this in the mixer? It seems like it would be so much easier. You don't have to put the gloves on. If you're gonna mix it in the mixer, you're gonna end up with um, meatballs that are a lot tougher. Uh, you don't wanna over mix this. You just wanna make sure that the ingredients are incorporated. It's not like mixing together a cookie dough or a batter where you wanna let things develop. The flavor is the only thing that needs to develop in here and that's gonna do, it's, that's gonna happen on its own. So you don't wanna over mix. You don't want tough meatballs. You want them to be tender and juicy and flavorful for sure. And I'm glad that you mentioned juicy because by not putting in the breadcrumbs and using coffee flour instead, the coffee flour is going to absorb the meat juices as it's cooking, and that will keep the juice actually inside the meatball. It's not gonna run out, and so it's going to be a juicier, more tender meatball just by using coffee flour. It's magic. It and is. coffee flour is also adding flavor. So we've spoken before about how coffee flour brings out flavors that are already in them in whatever it is you're making. So you're going to get the seasoning. You're going to get the herbs. And speaking of herbs, I only put chopped parsley in here. If you want to do rosemary or basil or oregano, whatever you want. I know meatballs are very person, uh, personal. I don't have an Italian grandmother, but I am pretty sure that every Italian grandmother has their own recipe for meatballs. So if you happen to have an Italian grand grandmother, if you're that lucky, see what her recipe is and use it. Because no matter what, if it comes from a grandmother, it's going to be good. Yes. All right, so that's mixed up. See, I didn't, it wasn't like both hands in there going elbows deep. It was just that simple. Now, another thing that's very personable about meatballs, the size. Some like the little meatballs, some like the big meatballs, whatever you want to do. We know that the portion scoop, as I have mentioned, is one of my favorite tools. So I have two different sizes here. So you just scoop it out, roll it. And I'm putting this on a parchment lined uh, sheet pan. Why are you doing that, you might ask. Why aren't you putting them in a pan with oil? Because it's so much easier just to put them all on a parchment lined sheet pan, throw them all in the oven. They do get brown, they do bake through, and that way you can do you know, 20, 30 at a time. It's so, less dishes. It's less dishes, <laughs> which is very important in my world. So I'm gonna roll a couple of those out. Okay, I'm gonna jump right into the pasta because this takes a little bit. So I've mixed the dough. An important thing about this dough is you really need to put it in the refrigerator for at least two hours. It'd be more beneficial if you could do overnight for a couple of hours, it's gonna be fine or else it's gonna be really sticky and nearly impossible to roll out. So I mentioned the course, I made this last night. It had a chance to sit in the fridge Again, using our KitchenAid mixer, and I have, this is just the sheeter attachment. I'm gonna put this on. And, and there are lots of different types of pasta rollers out there. We happen to have one that goes into a stand mixer, but there are rollers that just clamp onto your countertop as well, and you can hand crank them through, yep. or they might be electric, you plug them in, and you know, it takes care of the rolling for you. Or if you're privileged enough to have an extruder, this recipe works just as well in the extrusion. An extruder is like a Play-Doh, um, the old barbershop, <laughs> <laughs> something that pushes it through, um, you know, very shaped holes. So that's how you would get your different shaped pastas. So I have my cutting board here, the pasta. I have a bench scraper to help cut the dough. I cut I don't know, it was about one inch by three inch piece. It weighs maybe, I don't know, three or four ounces. I'm gonna, I have a bowl of semolina. I'm gonna gently roll the dough in that, flatten it so it's able to go through. Make sure I'm on the number one setting. Start slow if you haven't done it before. It does get a little easier over time. Again, it's just something that you know comes very easily once you practice it. Once you get the feel for it, you can do it with your eyes closed. Don't yes. do it with your eyes closed. Look at how good. pretty this course rolls out. I don't know if you're able to see, but it's the speckled. It looks like it could be a salt and pepper or a lemon pepper pasta. It's coffee flour. This is a high fiber pasta, and it's delicious. So after you go through number one setting a couple of times, dust it again with some semolina. Turn it to the number two. So you're just going up in increments? 
Yep, F in increments. And I stop at the number four on the adjustment. You can go as high as eight, but using the course especially, if you go past the number four setting on this particular roller, you're going to start to get some holes in your pasta. And we don't want that. If it happens, it's okay. But if you're making a ravioli or something like that, then the filling will come out, and that's not ideal. And Chelsea makes really good ravioli. Thank you. They're so good. Because we've mentioned before, coffee flour is so good with added fats, whether it's a cheese or butter or something that just really complements it well. So ravioli was kind of a no-brainer. So I'm just busy rolling these away. I happen to have a sheet over here that's already done. So clearly we're gonna have a lot of meatballs today. I'm just gonna pop these in an oven. You can see that it's just, as I mentioned, on a parchment line sheet pan. I have my oven set at 400. It's not gonna take very long. Obviously with the bigger meatballs, it does take longer, but these are the small guys. So it's gonna take, I would say seven to eight minutes on 400. And you're gonna be amazed at when they come out. This is what that small piece, the three ounce piece or so, looks like once it's been rolled to the number four setting. Ooh, almost lost that one. So again, I'll dust it with a little bit of semolina, and then I'm gonna switch over my cutter. Is there a question? Uh, somebody from the web is wondering if the pasta works with a paleo diet. Well, uh, no. this particular recipe, because of the other additional flours that we're using, we have a wheat flour included. Uh, I do have a version of a gluten-free pasta that I've tried. It hasn't been perfected, but as soon as it is, I will post it. Um, and yeah, so probably not ideal for the paleo. The meatballs, on the other hand, would be perfect for your perfect. paleo diet. And you could put it on some spaghetti squash or Gosh, the world is your good. oyster there, a good salad. But you can absolutely use the meatballs for your paleo diet. I think the spaghetti squash idea is awesome. All right, I'm gonna do that. So I'm using a fettuccine cutter. If you wanna do uh, ravioli, you leave it in the sheet. You can do lasagna, just leave it in the sheet. If you have a spaghetti cutter, or fettuccine cutter, whatever it may be, that's gonna work. But we're gonna do fettuccine today. So turn that on. Just Watch how fun this is. Ooh, isn't that cool? Nice. Now, on our Instagram page, we actually have a video of pasta being cut. Um, and it's a darker pasta because it was made with the regular flour. And it's one of those videos that, uh, you know, if you play it on the loop, it's just mesmerizing. It's really fascinating to watch. So, I'll just put this on another parchment white sheet or a plate. I'm dusting it with semolina so it doesn't stick together. And I'll lay my pasta out. So at this point, you could either cook it fresh as is, you can dry it, and it will hold beautifully for up to a month. I'd say dry, probably more if you seal it in an airtight container. Um, it, freezing, you could try to freeze it like this, but I would say as whole sheets, it would be a little bit better. It might get a little tacky if it does get some moisture on it in the freezing process. So when you dry it, it's just really letting it sit out, right? It is. Um, There's no special Old grandmas used to have a broomstick that they would hang and just fold it over. Or I'll try to show here. I just have my sheet uh, or my cut pasta here. If you roll it into a nest, Oiling it up. Yep. And then making sure to sprinkle it with additional semolina so it doesn't get sticky. Here you have a nest. You could dry this and hold it and cook it when you're ready in the future. And that's what we have in the bowl right here, right? The bowl up front? Yeah. So here I have examples of a nest using the regular flour and a nest using the coarse flour. I'm not sure if you can see that very well. I can pop that up to a touch maybe. And so the pasta is that simple. I have some water that I'm bringing up to a boil. I have another sheet pan of meatballs that's ready to go. You can see how quickly that went. I do still have some uh, mixture here in the bowl, so I'm going to go ahead. I mean, why not? Let's make a couple of large meatballs. There you go. I'm going to do one more nest before I cook. And then we'll be ready to go. Are there any more questions out in TV land?
So while we are waiting for the meatballs to cook and the water to come to a boil, we want to talk about again what coffee flour is. I'm going to take off my gloves for this. Is this too loud or are we okay? I, we're fine. We'll be fine. I can talk loud. Look at that mess. Um, so coffee flour is something that is that we have discovered that is a uh, byproduct of the coffee harvest. So. When coffee is harvested, it, they harvest the coffee cherry, which looks like this. What they're after is the pit of that cherry, which goes on then to become your morning cup of coffee. The fruit that surrounds the pit of that cherry is typically discarded, and it's an incredible environmental hazard. So we go in, we rescue that fruit, stabilize it, dry it, and mill it, and that gives us coffee flour. And you've heard us talk today, well, every week, about coarse and regular. And this is what the coarse looks like, and this is what the regular looks like. So the coarse gives you that speckled pasta look, the regular gives you the dark pasta look. Yeah. And you're able to find coffee flour right now. The regular is available on nuts.com, on markspantry.com, uh, at Sprouts Markets That's in their bulk section. Yep. And if you're interested in the coarse, which how can you not be? It's so cool. Then just be the squeaky wheel. Ask for it. The more people asking for it, the better the chances are that they're going to bring it in. Yeah, and I believe that um, nuts.com is in the process of bringing it in. So if you um, have ordered from them before or if you're looking specifically for the course, send them a message and say, I understand that you know about this course coffee flower product. Can you tell me about it? So Chelsea's just rolling right away yeah, there. I'm almost done. I put it on number four just now. So we'll go through just a couple more times. I'm amazed at how much work these pasta rollers do. Switch it up to our cutter. I'm going to check on these meatballs. Yep. All right. And so with this, I mean, we say nutrition a lot, but this is a high fiber pasta using a high fiber meatball, high in antioxidants, higher in protein. Just Absolutely. Beneficial all around. Yeah, it's got increased flavor, it's got increased nutritional benefits, you're also helping improve the environment and the um, all around lives of farmers and the surrounding communities and coffee growing regions by helping clean up their environment by re removing this byproduct and turning it into something nutritious. And you're also creating jobs which are year round. Um, and a lot of those jobs go to women which we're very proud of. I'm going to gently put my fresh pasta into the water. While it's fresh, it's going to cook up pretty quickly, I'd say within about one and a half to two minutes. If it's dried, it'll take slightly longer, maybe about four minutes. But a really cool thing about coffee flour pasta, which I have learned that if you get a phone call or a kid calls you and you need to walk away, it's really resilient in the fact that you can let it overcook a little bit and it's still gonna keep that tooth, the al dente. And we've experimented with going away for as much as 10 minutes past. And I mean, it's not al dente, it's not mushing apart. It's not just turning into mush. In addition to that, you may notice sometimes that after you've pulled your pasta from the water, you put it on your plate, it starts to release water. Coffee flour actually holds on to that water the sauce sticks to it, so you're not going to have a pool of liquid on your plate. That's nice. Nobody wants squishy pasta, and nobody wants their, their sauce that they've worked so hard on to be diluted by um, water that's just being released from pasta. That's no bueno. This is almost there. Okay. It's only been about 45 seconds. I'm going to let it go for another minute or so. So we've got a nice bowl here. I'm going to clear some of my bowls. I'm going to check on the meatballs again. Yep. They we are getting there. We have some warm sauce here, but as soon as I pull the pasta, I'll bring it back up. Just a kiss of heat. Kiss of heat. That's nice. Yeah. So this is a really good meal for, you know, it's, although we have a nice sunny day here in Seattle today, it's still the middle of winter. Let's not forget about that. So this is a nice, hearty, warm meal um, that you can feed your family. It makes really good leftovers as well. Uh, along with the pasta, keeping, you know, as, as Chelsea just mentioned, even if you overcook it, mm -hmm. once it's cooked, it keeps in the fridge really nicely. So it makes a great second day meal. Yeah. I like to eat whole pasta. I'm, I know I'm weird like that. It's not my favorite. But, but I've done this and pasta it's great. salads. 
It does work in pasta yeah. salads really, really well. Yeah, it holds because the coffee flour adds structure and it does keep a nice firm pasta. Um, a lot of times when you're making pasta salads, it can, you know, whether you put the, the dressing or the oil on it, that can also kind of mush it out. And mm -hmm. this doesn't uh, mush out. Yep, technical term. Exactly. So, it's that easy. We're done. I'm going to pull this. So this is delicious with just a little bit of olive oil and some Parmesan cheese. Look or we have some Isn't that pretty? So I'll put in our bowl. Yeah, we can away, oh, away our sauce. If we had a second burner, I probably would have put the pasta directly in the sauce. That is but nice. Let's see it this way. All right. So that sauce is just going to warm up. By the time that's warmed up, these meatballs will be done. We'll sprinkle a little more of the Parmesan cheese that I had shredded and a little more of the Italian parsley, and it will be a Okay, do it. I'm going for it. You never tell a pregnant woman she can't go in for food. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. I was going to say it will be a total like Lady of the Tramp style. <laughs> yeah. It could. And with Valentine's Day being yesterday, it's a little fitting. Yes. <laughs> I hope everybody had a great day yesterday, whether you were with your Valentine or not with your Valentine. You're still looking for your Valentine. I hope it was good for everybody. Nope. Oh, we're hot here. Okay. So I'm going to pull these meatballs out. It was that simple. Look at how those look. They're sizzling and they're hot and they're brown. Okay. And so if you want to sauce that up, and I'll throw some meatballs oh, sure. on top. There we go. And we do find that coffee flour works really well with uh, tomatoes in general. I mean, it works really well with fats, we talked about before. But the acidity of tomatoes, so whether it is um, you know, in a fresh tomato salad, in, it, if it's in the dressing, or uh, something like this, where it's on pasta with a really good tomato sauce, the coffee flour flavor profile, which that's a tongue twister, <laughs> um, works really well with tomato sauces. So, throwing some meatballs on here. This yep. good. You can use these meatballs straight out of the oven. You can throw them in the sauce to have them finish if you like doing that. Really, it's just what works so best for you. Meatballs. Some extra parm because that never hurts. That Put that amazing. on there. And then you always want to garnish with something green. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I'm going to say. And there you have, my friends, a coffee flour pasta with coffee flour meatballs. A delicious, nutritious, interesting dish. Yep. And we have used both kinds of coffee flour in this one. You can find the recipe for the pasta, probably the meatballs as well, on our website. Or you could go to Facebook where it will be posted. Instagram will be at Coffee Flower Lab. We're going to take a picture of this and throw it up on uh, Instagram right now, in fact. All right. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. We will see you in two weeks. Chelsea, I'm not sure if you're going to be here. It's day by day at this point. It but is. We, I, for sure, will be here in two weeks. Again, no idea what we're going to make. But if you <laughs> have a suggestion for us, if you see something that you would like to know how we made, or if you have an idea in your head and you're wondering if we have tried it, send us a message and we will make an attempt at it. That's right. Sweet or savory, as you can see, you can make just about anything. <laughs> and this is our lunch today as well. So thanks, everybody, for joining us. I will see you in two weeks. And I may or may not, but I will be with you in spirit. And if I'm not here, I will be watching. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.